This is a B-Link GK Mini. As the name suggests, it's a mini PC. It's actually quite affordable. The CPU chip we have in is a very popular Celeron chip that you'll find in other mini PCs and also some mid-range NASs. So by the end of this video, hopefully we'll know if it's worth a look. We're gonna bench it, test it as a Plex server, thermals, noise, and of course run some games on it. So it should be a ton of fun. Firstly, this is what you get in the box. The PC, HDMI cable, 12 volt, two amp power adapter, and in my case, an international adapter as it doesn't come with an Aussie power adapter. Also the manual and mounting bracket, which you can attach to the back of a Visa capable monitor. The unit is finished in a black plastic, which doesn't affect fingerprints, and the overall feel of it is in the middle of the road for me. So it's not super cheap feeling like some of the units of AliExpress, but also not like an Intel NUC. It's also not a heavy unit at just 250 grams. I'll put up its dimensions. On the front of the unit, you get a clear CMOS button, two USB-A 3.0 ports, a headset jack, and a power button, which does have a tactile click when pressed. Over on the rear, another two USB 3.0 ports, Gigabit LAN, HDMI 2.0 ports, and a Kensington lock. Before I move on, did you guys notice anything? I'll give you a hint in a riddle. When I stick things in, I like to be on top. The USBs are upside down. The little plastic part is on the bottom rather than the top. Anyway, moving on. On the inside, you've got a DDR4 sodium RAM slot. This unit has 2400 MHz 8GB stick installed, and unfortunately it only runs in single channel mode. We've also got a pre-installed 128GB M.2 SATA SSD, and unfortunately it doesn't support NVMe, otherwise I'll stick an external graphics card in it. There is a soldered on Wi-Fi 5 chip, which I believe has the inbuilt Bluetooth 4.0. Then lastly, there's also space for a 2.5 inch SATA drive, which I really appreciate. Lastly, the CPU is an Intel Celeron J4125, which has four cores, a base frequency of 2 GHz, which bursts up to 2.7 GHz. It's on the 14 nanometer process with a 10 watt TDP, and it was released in April 2019. In case you're wondering, I had a perv in the BIOS and the TDP can't be adjusted. The CPU is a few years old now, and that chip is actually pretty popular in the network attached storage units, as it's supposed to be capable of video hardware transcoding. More on that later. Okay, let's actually bench this thing. I ran some Cinebench R20, single core score of 164 and multi-score of 589, which is expected from this CPU. Pretty slow and just a smidge faster than the N4100, which scores 151 single and 544 multi-core. Here are the Geekbench results, 424 single core and 1393 multi-core. For context, it's roughly the same performance as an Intel Core 2 Quad from 2007. Despite its lackluster performance, I will say that from a day-to-day -day perspective, it is more than sufficient. The chip is adequately quick for casual browsing and YouTubing, and just having an SSD in a computer makes it incredibly responsive. I would have had no issue using this for extended periods. Next, I'm going to do some hardware transcoding via Plex. I've got three HEVC copies of Tenet, 4K at 28.4 megabit, 4K at 4.2 megabit, and 1080p at 3.5 megabit. Sorry, I'm not going to show you any footage because of copyright reasons, obviously. I'm going to run this to see how they go, and in an instance where it can transcode, I'll see how many streams it can do. All right, and one last thing, I'm connected via gigabit ethernet to ensure no network related bottlenecks. So no good at 4K for either of the files, which is really disappointing, particularly the 4.2 megabit file. I was really expecting it to work, but unfortunately it's just a buffering mess. The 1080p 3.5 megabit file on the other hand did really well. I was able to get four concurrent streams before maxing out the CPU, which is good enough for most people. Okay, now let's give some games a go on the Intel HD 600 integrated graphics. First game, Left 4 Dead 2, 720p, low settings. I get FPS in the mid 50s and sometimes just over 60. More than playable, but what do you expect from a game that's 13 years old now? Next game, CSGO, 600p, very low settings. Performance was pretty choppy and a bit all over the shop. Usually its FPS was around the low 30s, but with fluctuations going up past 40 and also down in the low 20s, meaning it was stuttering often. Some would say playable, but not a great experience. Last game, Dota 2, 600p, performance settings. Very similar experience with CSGO. At its best, I was seeing frame rates in the high 50s, but depending on what I had on screen, it could drop in the high 20s. Playable is seriously desperate, and if you don't mind the odd aspect ratio. 
Overall, not the best for gaming. Expect to only play old titles or barely scrape by in esports titles, which also doesn't make sense given the general competitive nature of those games. If you're looking to do cloud gaming or remote gaming via programs like Parsec, this is going to handle it no problems and it's probably going to be the best way to game on it. Temps when running Cine Bench on this unit when running two Cine Benches back to back was max 64 degrees, so very cool. What was really interesting is that the fan noise was actually really good, really, really quiet. When running a full ball, it was still under 32 decibels, about 30 centimeters away. No one either, it's just a fan noise, which just kind of makes sense. If you have this unit mounted behind a monitor, it's going to be even less audible. Power draw is around 7 watts at idle and 18 watts at max load. Very good numbers, but also what you would expect from a system like this. Okay, so that was a B-Link GK35 Mini. This unit picked up off AliExpress for about 115 US dollars. If you're in Australia, you can buy it off eBay with an Australian warranty for about 260 Aussie dollars. I think it's a great little unit, definitely more versatile given its size and port selection as compared to the M1K PC stick I reviewed recently, but at least with this unit, you can mount it behind a monitor, so it really can be completely out of sight if that's your preference. For the person after a media PC or casual browsing and YouTube, this is going to be great. It's still a quad quad at the end of the day and SSDs make a world of difference when it comes to overall system responsiveness. And I was also very surprised at how quiet it was, even under load. So from that perspective, it gets a recommend from me. Its Plex transcoding abilities are limited to 1080p and given its low power draw, it would make a great budget 24-7 Plex server. My media library just so happens to be 1080p, so I might actually keep this PC around. Though I have to say the J4125 CPU chip is getting pretty dated now. We're seeing the seller on N5095 and N5105 coming close in price, which I have here and will be doing some videos for as well. So make sure you subscribe and of course like the video if you got some value out of it. Till next time, bye bye.